what's poppin you guys how y'all doing this week how y'all doing how y'all doing i can't even say this week how y'all doing this video <laughs> shame on me i know but if y'all new here my name's Ciara, and this is self-made energy what we want for nothing because we can manifest anything so this video you guys i wanted to do this bomb.com i'm not even gonna say the a word because it's about to come out so bomb.com <laughs> I'm gonna do this bomb like reversible fur coat. That's what I that's what it is. Those are the words that I'm gonna use to describe it. A reversible fur coat. It's gonna be one design on one side and one design on the other side. You're gonna be able to flip it on both sides and change it up because I love doing that. I love switching it up. Still pink because <laughs> that's me, but you know, it's still gonna be different. <laughs> I got the inspiration from a coat I seen on dollskill.com, but you know, they're not really here for the Black Power Movement right now, so I haven't really been messing with them, but their stuff is still cute, so I kind of still scroll, I just don't buy, but you know, whatever, pick your poison, I'm not supporting it, I'm just, you know, scrolling through a magazine. <laughs> But anyway, yes, they have this cute, like, teddy coat, and I love it. I've been seeing teddy coats everywhere, so it's not just a dog kill thing. It's just a teddy coat thing. And I'm finna do one, because I want a pink one. Why wouldn't I? But mine's is gonna be reversible, because I want to be able to wear it with different outfits. Switch it up on y'all. Yeah. Y'all yeah, don't know how I'm about to hit you, because I'm gonna call this coat Diamond Daisy. And you're gonna see why. When you see the print, you're gonna be like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, let's get into it because this coat was too fire to even delay it any longer. Let's go. Okay, so this is how I start out all my projects. I jot down everything that I need, draw out all the pictures because pictures help me see better. And I have a picture of my inspiration just to refer back to to keep everything organized. Now, let's get into the project for real. This is the actual fabric that I'm going to use for one side. It's just a diamond printed fur. It's like a mauve color, very muted, so cute. But anyway, let's get into the instructions. <laughs> I started out by cutting out on the fold, one for each fabric, the back of each jacket. I made sure that there were no seams, even though I created some later. Here I'm cutting out two pockets for each fabric, so that's four pockets cut out in total. And here's the two fronts, one for each fabric as well. I cut this out on the fold and then cut straight up the fold because jackets need to open, you know? <laughs> now I'm cutting out the hood and I like to have the hood in three pieces. So this would be the side of the hood. You need two for each fabric. That's just so you can create the strip that's gonna go down the middle and that gives you more room for hair and head and neck and whatever you need. Then I'm gonna cut out the sleeves. I also cut these out on the fold just because I didn't wanna seam at the top of my sleeve because it was gonna disrupt my pattern. So I cut out two sleeves for each jacket. I did cut out a left and a right just because they're a little bit different. Once I was done cutting out all the pieces I needed, I started putting the back together because I decided I wanted to change the whole thing up mid pattern making. So I included this pink daisy fur. It's so adorable. The daisies are in sequins. Oh my God, I love it so much. But anyway, I'm getting completely besides the point. <laughs> because I wanted to change it up, I needed to sew the whole back back together. The whole back of the jacket back together, if that makes sense to you. So this is the back of one side of my jacket. It's gonna be the pink daisy fur and some pink Sherpa. And I wanted it to have like a varsity look. So I do have to sew along straight edge and one straight down the back of the middle just to connect all these pieces together so it looks like the actual back that it's supposed to. So I just pinned up the top of the back to the two bottom back pieces. And then I moved on to pinning the sleeves up on the open side. I just pinned them right sides together. Make sure you label your sleeves because they do look similar. And oh my God, you guys, don't even get me started on the sleeves. <laughs> but we'll talk about that later. The first thing I did was sew along all the pins that I just put in. So I started with sewing the two bottom back pieces to each other, right sides together, 
because I'm sewing fur, I'm making sure that I'm pushing the fur inside. I don't want the fur to be in the seams, so I'm pushing it inside the fabric, squeezing it together as much as I can, just to keep it out the way and to keep it from looking bunchy at the seams later. Once I was done with the bottom piece, I moved on to securing the bottom to the top of the back. So I sewed along the pins, right sides together, another zigzag stitch. Don't forget to back stitch at the beginning and end of each of your stitches because this will hold your work in place. You don't want it unraveling later. But yeah, start in the middle just so everything is even. That is the most important thing. You want your items to look even. You don't want everything to be sideways, twisted, wonky, unless that's your intention. If your intent is to have it sideways and looking edgy, then yes, do that, work. But if that's not your intentions, just make sure you start from the middle because it definitely keeps everything nice and even in the end. Once I was done securing one side, I didn't wanna flip my fabric over just because the diamond fur is more slippery than the Sherpa, so I wanted to keep that on the bottom as much as I could. I just squeezed the fabric on the inside of the sewing machine and secured the other side. It is a little bit more difficult just to maneuver through the machine, especially working with fur, but get it done. You got this, I believe in you. But anyway, once I was done securing everything into place, I just trimmed the seams because there's so much, like they're so bulky with fur, uh, it's annoying. Even though they're not gonna show, you're gonna feel them. So you want them to be as smooth as possible. So cut as close as you can without cutting the threads but do leave a little bit of room because you don't want it to shred and open up. We don't have time for that either. So leave a little bit of room, like three eighths. And y'all, these are literally the first pieces I sewed together and I was already in love. Like, do y'all see this? Ugh, gorgeous. <laughs> I digress. I then began attaching the front two pieces, right sides together, pinned along the side seams. Don't forget to push the fur in when you pin and when you're sewing, because you don't want the fur to be stuck in the seams. It's very disgusting looking, trust me. You don't want it. Another thing you want to keep in mind in this part is that your armhole is very even, because this is going to match the pattern of the sleeve you cut out earlier. So when you're pinning and sewing, make sure you start under the arm down to the bottom because the bottom is way easier to trim and correct and even out later. But if you mess up the armhole, you're gonna have to adjust the jacket and the sleeve. And you would have to do it four times because both sides have two sleeves, like just so much work. No, avoid it. Make sure your armholes are even. But anyway, now we're going to the sewing machine and I'm just sewing along all the pins that we just placed in. Again, I'm gonna keep saying it because it's very important. Make sure the fur is pushed in as much as possible, you guys. And I'm just gonna do a zigzag stitch straight down to the bottom, and I'm also gonna do this to the other side as well. Once I was done securing everything into place, I trimmed the edges again, and now you basically have a vest. And now it's time to attach the sleeves, and this part is where I made such a grave error. Just so annoying, it was the biggest error well, it wasn't that serious, but it was very annoying to seam rip out on fur, let me tell you. Try not to make any mistakes on fur because you can't see the seams to get it out. <laughs> I wanted to try a new technique where you sew the sleeve to the jacket along the opening of the armhole before you close the sleeve. And then once the sleeve is on the jacket, you would start from the hand part and sew a straight stitch all the way down to the bottom of the jacket but I totally messed up. Silly old me forgot that you're not supposed to close the side seam before you attach the sleeve because the goal of this technique is to use one stitch to close the sleeve and the side seam. So I messed that up long ago, but of course I didn't notice. So I attached the sleeve upside down and I cut off the excess. I did everything. I took all the proper steps, stuffed in the fur, made sure everything was nice and even, and then I ended up with a beautifully done upside down sleeve. <laughs> Once I realized what I had done, I had to do the sleeves the regular way. 
because I already closed the side seam and I sure wasn't taking that out. So I just went in and I sewed along the pins that I originally put in and closed up the side seam of the sleeves. Then I attached the sleeves to the opening in the jacket. You wanna make sure when you're doing this part that you start pinning and sewing from where the side seam is under the yarn. That is the most important part because you want your seams to line up. I know it's a little hard to see on fur, so your seams could be a little wonky. It's a little bit forgiving, but let's just practice good practices so we can always get better. So just make sure everything's nice and even. Once I was done attaching that second sleeve and trimming up all the edges and it actually came out right, I took on the task of seam ripping the other sleeve off so I could correct all my mistakes. And I have lost my seam ripper, so I had to do this with an X-Acto knife, which is not easy. Ugh. This whole process was very frustrating, but ugh, it was so worth it. It's just a testament to y'all. Don't give up. Once I was done attaching the sleeves, I attached the hood, but unfortunately I didn't notice that my phone died, so I don't have footage of that part. But once I was done with that, I did the exact same thing to the other fabric. So this is just some sped up footage minus the sleeve mistake. I opted to just do the sleeves regularly instead of trying the new technique. I figured I'd try that technique on a fabric that was a little more easy to work with. Let's just say that. <laughs> I actually do have the footage of me attaching the hood with this fabric. So here I am just pinning the sides of the hood to that strip that goes down the middle, right sides together along the curve. I did that on both sides and then I just did a zigzag stitch to secure everything into place. Trimmed all the edges and made sure everything was nice and neat. And then I took the finished hood and attached it to the back of the jacket, right sides together, pinned it together, and then I did a zigzag stitch along the entire bottom of the hood to make sure everything was secure. And then the hood was stuck into place. A couple things you wanna keep in mind when you're attaching the hood to the back of the jacket. You wanna line up that front line with the front where the zipper's gonna be. You wanna line up that shoulder seam with the side of the hood that's gonna have a seam there as well. And you wanna make sure everything is nice and straight because the hood can look a little lopsided if it's not fully centered. So just make sure everything's nice and even before you sew. Once I was done with both sides of the jackets, here's what they look like. And then I had to attach the pockets. So I moved on to that. I just ended up attaching the pockets with some random lining I had laying around the house. I don't even think it's lining, it's probably some cotton fabric. But I just used it as lining because it had flowers that matched so perfectly. But anyway, everything was sliding around and my pockets were coming out so ratchet, so ugly, so uneven. Just the most, like it was the most sewing the pockets. I think out of everything on this jacket, even with the upside down sleeve, making the pockets was still the worst part. <laughs> but yeah, when you're sewing the pockets, you just want to sew a straight stitch around the entire perimeter, leaving like a two inch opening so you can flip it inside out. Then to attach the pockets to the jacket, I just measured out where I wanted them and I pinned them in place and I sewed right sides together, just along the bottom, a zigzag stitch. And then I flipped it over so the bottom was nice and crisp. And then I just sewed a top stitch around the remaining two edges. Don't forget to leave the top open. This is a pocket, not a patch. <laughs> and y'all, I was super nervous to sew the top stitch across the pocket just because I didn't want it to come out wonky or uneven or anything. But once I got that thing in, you could not see it. Like all the seams in this jacket just disappear. The fur just eats them up. It's so beautiful. 
But yeah, once I was done attaching the pockets, both sides were fully done and it was now time to attach them to each other, which was also a daunting task. Like I was so intimidated. I watched so many videos and none of the videos showed me how to attach these jackets. Like <laughs> I don't understand. Am I the only one making a reversible jacket out here with zippers? Nobody makes a reversible jacket with zippers. They do it with buttons. And that's so annoying because this just would not look good with buttons. But whatever, I digress. I'll do the tutorial and show y'all how it's done. <laughs> In order to have a really clean, seamless look, you are gonna wanna sew these right sides together, mostly everywhere. So you're gonna wanna sew along the top of the hood. Don't sew where the zipper goes unless you're gonna install the zipper at the same time. It's going to be so much easier. I did not do it at the same time here just because my zipper wasn't long enough. So I had to figure out what I was going to do about that. So I did end up sewing the zigzag stitch where the zipper would go, just closing it up, making everything nice and even just so I could figure out what I was going to do later. But in the future, when I have a zipper that actually fits, I would install the zipper before I closed everything up or at the same time as I'm closing everything up. Here I'm pinning where the zipper would be. I would just smush the zipper in between the furs with the teeth on the inside and sew right along that edge. I also decided to put elastic along the bottom. So I put a zigzag stitch along the entire bottom, but I did not make the channel for the elastic yet because you won't be able to flip it inside out if you close it all the way up. So only do that zigzag stitch along the bottom. And then once you flip everything inside out, you can do the top stitch to make the channel for your elastic. So just to go over everything, just to make sure I'm clear, you're gonna wanna attach these jackets right sides together, pinned along where the zipper goes. You wanna smash the zipper in between the furs with the teeth on the inside Make sure they're lined up on both sides so it is functional. Once you flip it inside out, you're gonna wanna sew along that outer edge of the hood. And you're also gonna wanna sew along the entire bottom, leaving about a five inch opening so you do have room to actually flip the jacket inside out. You are not going to attach the bottom of the sleeves. I repeat, do not attach the bottom of the sleeves. <laughs> Obviously, I had to learn the hard way not to attach the sleeves right now. Because as you can see, I attached the sleeves right now. <laughs> but of course, once I flipped it inside out, they just ended up being a long tube that I could not flip right side for nothing. Like, no matter how I shimmy and shook this jacket, I just could not line the sleeves up because I attached them early. So just attach the perimeter, don't attach the sleeves, flip it inside out, and then do a top stitch around the bottom of the sleeves just to close everything up, and then it'll be perfect. Trust me, it'll save you time, seam ripping, effort, sweat, blood, and tears, and everything else you pour into this beauty. Once I was done seam ripping the sleeve opening and straightening everything out, making sure it was nice and even, I just did a top stitch along the bottom of the sleeves. Because it's fur, I wasn't worried about fraying, but I did just fold it under a tiny bit just so it could look seamless as possible. Once I was sure that everything was where I wanted it and it was nice and even, I just did a top stitch over the entire perimeter just to make sure everything laid nice and flat. When I wore it, it wouldn't be flipping and flopping on each side, showing the inside and doing some weird stuff. I didn't want it to do. So I just did a top stitch just to secure everything in place and make sure it stayed where I wanted it. I also measured out where I wanted my elastic to go, pinned it into place. I pinned the elastic but did not sew the elastic. I just pinned where it would go. And then I sewed a zigzag stitch along those pins leaving enough space for the elastic to fit through that channel that I just made. Once I was done making the channel for the elastic, I just took a safety pin 
and pin the elastic to one end of the opening and then I used my loop turner on the other side of the opening and reached all the way through and pulled the elastic through and then I sewed a straight stitch on both ends of the elastic so it wouldn't move but it would still be able to move freely throughout the entire bottom of the jacket. So it's only secured on the ends where the jacket meets and opens. Once I was done adding the elastic, it was literally nothing else to do but figure out what to do with this freaking zipper. So I just opted to use the zipper that was too short and just leave an opening at the bottom where the elastic is. And it's just a look, it is what it is. It's a look, I said it's a look. Don't at me, you know what, you can at me. I wanna hear it. <laughs> I don't mind, at me, let me know how you feel about it. Let me know what you would have done. Let me know if you would have made the jacket shorter or if you would have went to the store and found a longer zipper instead of being stubborn like me and changing the entire look of your jacket instead. <laughs> One more thing to keep in mind when you're attaching your zipper, make sure you leave enough room so the fur doesn't get caught in the zipper when you zip it up. But other than that, we're done y'all. Let's get into this look. see this this is like so fire like it's everything about me wrapped up in a pink fur with glitter and glam because that's me like yes i so love this piece i am gonna get so much wear out of this y'all don't even know i hope y'all love it as much as i do and if you do don't forget to hit that like button so i know how you feeling don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already because I'm definitely looking forward to meeting all of you guys and getting to know everybody and sharing all of this talent with all of you. So, if you haven't already, make sure to share these videos with your friends and family so we can get the word out and let everybody know what's popping over here. But, until next time you guys, love, peace, and cupcakes. Bye.